everybody, Fiber Spider back again in the kitchen with another tasty recipe for you. Today, it's all about comfort food. Mm-hmm, yep. And we are going to be making a tater tot casserole. It is so good. Now, of course, there are a million and one variations of tater tot casseroles. And so today, it's going to be hot dogs, chili, cheese, and tater tots. It's so good. Very, very easy. Comes together pretty quickly, and you get a nice amount of leftovers for later. Mm, 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 mm. So, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? All right. Hello again. All right, so we're gonna start with some of the veggies involved. Don't worry, kids, there aren't that many. All right, so I'm gonna start off with half of an onion, medium-sized. And to save on some of the labor, I'm gonna use a food processor. because ultimately you want your onion to be really nice and finely chopped up. So I'm just gonna chop this up into some smaller pieces. And I'm gonna pop it into my food processor here. Don't worry, I'm not turning it on just yet. other half ready for storage in the fridge. Now, of course, if you really like onion, and I do, but half an onion I think works well. If you really like a lot of onion, by all means, add more. All right, so there's that. Now, for my secret ingredient, Jalapenos! Yes, I couldn't leave well enough alone as per usual. So, I'm going to add some jalapenos. Now, to sort of cut down on the heat, I'm going to remove the seeds and the membrane from these little guys so that nobody dies. It's a good thing. Alternatively, you could use about a quarter of a teaspoon of crushed red pepper or more, you know, uh, hot sauce, what have you. It's all good. Me, personally, I thought fresh jalapenos would make a nice touch for this dish. Now, I know that in a previous video, I made a lot of you very, very nervous when I was prepping my jalapenos because I was using a cleaver. Um, don't worry, I got that covered. You know, using an appropriate size knife for a change. And to get out the, the membrane and the seeds, I'm gonna use a spoon. which is probably what I should have done the first time, but that's okay. See, what a lot of people don't know is that it's not just the seeds, it's also the membrane, that white part inside of there that really gives it the heat. So I'm just going to pop this little guy in here and then do the same with the rest of them. Also, if I read this correctly, that quite often, the smaller the pepper is, the hotter it is. Which I find rather interesting because it's actually very similar to some species of spiders. It's the little guys that you have to look out for. There we go, pop you in there. And then we just got a couple more. And this will be adding a good amount of flavor to our casserole. Now, you don't have to go crazy and make sure that every single seed is gone. Just, you know, the, the vast majority of them. There we 
go. There's two more. And I'm going to put them in the processor because if we've got small bits, they will not be still crispy after we're done cooking. There. Give it a quick mix. Voila. All right, so step one out of the way. All right, so onwards to the wet ingredients. All right, so from here, it's pretty much all downhill. All right, we have ourselves three quarters of a cup of ketchup. Any brand will do. There we are. Two cans of chili. These are 15 ounce cans of Hormel chili, hashtag not sponsored. Now I've got one with beans and I have one with no beans. Sort of evens up the playing field. But you are going to want two cans. Just get all that chili goodness in here. Now, of course, I imagine that if you are more interested in a variation, a vegetarian variation of this dish, that you know you could do a sort of a bean-based chili and veggie hot dogs. You know, nothing saying you can't do that. You know, tofu and so forth. Sure, why not? Just because I'm not a vegetarian doesn't mean that other people aren't, and I respect that. Okay. And almost good. There we go. Start to give this a little bit of a mix. Not too thorough just yet. We're not quite at the, the crucial stage. All right, now, one package of hot dogs. And so this is a count of eight, and these are sabrette, but, you know, some people, they have favorites. Me, it's like a hot dog is a hot dog is a hot dog. Some people swear by certain brands and so on and so forth. Me, a hot dog is a hot dog is a hot dog. And, of course, they do not make these easy to get into, do they? Aha, success. All right, there we go. All oh, sort of. Come on. There we go. So I'm going to cut up all eight of these and add them to our existing mix. Yeah, it does seem like quite a bit, but trust me, this works. Okay, so just 
cut all these little guys up. just little little circles you know specific measurements does not matter bite-sized how about that you know if you've got a hungry family I'm sure they are not going to notice the difference they're gonna be more interested in eating this than critiquing it Also, I imagine this would be awesome to bring to a potluck. There we go. And one more. Okay, voila. All right, just give my hands a quick wash. the home stretch, believe it or not. Just give this a nice little stirry stir. Try to get all those flavors mixed together, especially the peppers. Now, of course, you can omit the hot peppers. You know, if spice is not nice to your tummy tum, that's okay, you know, you can totally play around with this recipe by all means. I just like to zazz things up, you know, that's how I roll. Okay, so we are just about set for the assembly. All right, so we're in the home stretch. We're going to start the assembly. What I did though is I preheated my oven 350. It's getting up to temp right now. And I have a 9 by 13 casserole dish, which I already sprayed with cooking spray. So now, just going to empty out the contents of what we've created into our dish here, and then play the layering game. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. That's about right. Okay. And just try to even things out a little bit. Arrange our little hot dog pieces so they're not clumped in one particular area too terribly much. Just try to even things out a little bit. Go for some homogeny. There. Okay. Now, from here, cheese time! As far as the exact measurements, you know, the, you know, the, the measurement, yeah, the amounts, the measurements, the amounts of the cheese. The initial recipe I found, it said two and a half cups. Just cover it. <laughs> so this is Colby Jack, a Colby Jack blend. So it's shredded Colby and Monterey Jack cheese. Really whatever works, whether you're using, you know, cheddar, what have you, go for it. Just gonna give a nice, healthy sprinkling layer. Okay. 
And this is why I bought a second bag. Because I knew I was going to run out. Now don't go too crazy because we are going to be adding more later. So now, the pace de resistance, the namesake, tater tots. So I have here, this is a 28 ounce bag of frozen tater tots. I did not let them defrost. And so what you do now is just create an even layer of tater tots on top. Now. It doesn't have to be pretty. We're not doing mosaic tiling here, but you do want just a nice covering of tater tots all over the top. And yes, your hands will get nice and cold doing this. Trust me, happened to me the first time I made this. Also, invariably, you're probably not going to need the entire bag. I didn't when I first made this. Um, and I had enough left over for a very small snack. So I figure when I'm done making this, I'll have enough leftovers for a small snack, add it to the other ones, and then have a substantial snack. How about that? Also, I don't know about you guys, but finding tater tots is not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to do. Mm -mm, no, you're, you're probably going to find that to be a little bit weird. But um, I do a lot of my shopping at Walmart, and for several weeks, they haven't had tater tots. Go figure. And uh, my mom, when she was out shopping, she said that she would look. Nope, nope, nope. You know, I, I found them at a local grocery store, but I don't know. Is there some, like, weird shortage or something? I don't know. I mean, I know they're good. Don't get me wrong. But please, let's be real here. Now, also, I imagine that you could use shredded hash brown potatoes, frozen french fries. I want I like these because it's very easy to scoop and serve this out. Okay, and we are almost in the home stretch. And then after I'm done layering this and the oven is done preheating, we're gonna stick this in the oven for about 30 minutes. Cover this with some more cheese and then stick it back in the oven for a bit longer. And then we will be able to reap the rewards of this fabulous dish. Ooh, my hands are so cold. Oof, my poor little mitts. Okay, I think we are just about groovy. Yes. Get in there. All right, and a quick wash. Whew, alrighty. 
Okie dokie. So now that this is all assembled and ready to go, as soon as my oven is done preheating, I'm going to pop it in for 30 minutes at 350 and I will see you in a bit. Alrighty, so it has been a half an hour at 350. Going to take out our casserole and add the final embellishing layer of cheese. Ooh, careful, it's gonna be hot. Oh, this smells so good already. All right, now do be careful because of course this is very, very hot when applying your next layer of cheese. Again, you wanna have a nice layer. Don't go too crazy, otherwise it might go over. You know, you don't want that. I mean, it's not gonna rise. It's not like a cake, but uh, just go around and give it a good layer. Oh, this smells so good. I cannot wait. <laughs> now, and whoever made the arbitrary sort of measurement as to how much cheese you need, pshaw. Sure. Just eyeball it. I mean, obviously you don't want to have a solid mess on top, but you know, give it a good layer. A little around the edges. A little bit more. Okay, I think we are good. All right, so. Almost forgot to put these back on. <laughs> All right. In we go. <laughs> Heavy. All right, so for another 10 minutes, Okie dokie. So another 10 minutes at 350. I didn't change the temperature at all. And I will see you when we pop it out of the oven. I will see you in a bit. Mm. Alrighty, my dears. So now for the moment of truth. Always one of my favorite parts right up there with the taste test. It's been about another 10 minutes at 350. The cheese has melted and... Ooh, it's a sight of beauty. Oh, here's the crucial moment. Gotta be careful. Oh my goodness gracious me. Oh, isn't that awesome? Woo. Okay. And it didn't overflow. Yay! <laughs> oh, it looks so good. I can't wait to dive in. However, I'm going to because I don't want to burn my face off. I'm going to let this cool down, stop bubbling like it's breathing from underneath. You can see the bubbles right over here. It, it's, it's twitching. <laughs> it's moving. Um, I'm going to let this cool down for a little bit. And once it does, we will do the taste test. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. I'll see you in a bit. All right, so now for the moment of truth, we have our lovely, lovely tater tot casserole, and I cannot wait to dig in. Mm -hmm -hmm. Hopefully it's not too spicy since I removed those seeds from the jalapenos. Oh, this looks so good. Oh, you got the cheese stretch. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Delish. Mm. 
absolutely wonderful. Just the right amount of cheese. It's saucy. I'm not getting any spice, really. You know, it's, it's very, very mild. It's got a slight twang. I think next time what I'll do is I'll leave the seeds in, maybe half of, if I use four, maybe leave the seeds in half of them. Mm. Mm. Delightful. Mm. I love comfort food. You know, and usually the definition is, it usually includes potatoes, cheese, some sort of meat product that isn't very good for you. And there you go, comfort food. <laughs> Well, have you made a tater tot casserole before? If you have, what did you do that was different? What did you do that was the same? I'm always curious for input, you know, constructive criticism, etc. Let me know what was your experience, you know? And also, of course, always looking for ideas for future videos. You know, give me your suggestions. I'm always listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... I hope you liked the video. Yeah. So if you did, give a little thumbs up button down below because as always, you know that I appreciate your appreciation. And you know what to do until next time, right? Stay inspired. Stay caffeinated. Stay making fabulous, yummy, 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 yummy things in the kitchen. Take care of yourselves and each other. Make them a fabulous meal. And I will see you in my next video. Have a great day, everybody. Bye for now.